Hey guys, my name is Devotable Halo, and today I am joined by the Le Legions of Sin, uh, Saint Makoto and Saint Targaryen, the leader, or more or less the high ranks of the Legions of Sin. How are you guys today? Not, Not too, too bad. bad, how are you? Yeah. Alright, so I'm today I'm featuring two people, and they are the, one of the most like higher up people, iconic people of the Legions of Sin. So I'm going to be asking you guys a few questions, since you guys are one of the faces of the Halo 4 clan community, and you guys were one of the most active clans in Halo 4. And let's just say there wasn't much clans in Halo, that or not much media clans in Halo 4, right? I would I would say there were not a lot of good media clans in Halo 4. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start off this video by asking, how did you guys join the Halo 4 community? Well, uh, why? How would how would you like to? Well, our first involvement in the uh, military community was. Uh, we always known about uh, other clans, and so it was before our clans even founding. We we seen it here and there, and uh, we knew very little of it. And so me and uh, Makoto here actually uh, talked to Century Strike and uh, the UUF and all those people before we were actually in the community. Um, as for Makoto, he was actually in the UN at one point. Nothing, nothing impressive or anything. Just in and out, like Lingling Ling had stated in the previous interview. Um, so when things came to be, and we finally settled into the military community, we were starting fresh. Um, it was really, it was really just curiosity that led us to it. All right. Why would you like to say anything? Um, yeah, like that. That pretty much covers covers it. Um, are you kind of more like looking to like? Uh, what what we did when we first entered, or just like how we we heard about it, or what? Uh, I'm just wondering how you guys entered it. I'll probably ask you about more about the stuff. Now, there's been a lot of clans. Like your media is one of the one is probably one of the best media I've seen for the new Halo Four. And there's been a lot of new media changes since the Halo Reach. Uh, have you guys seen the old Halo Reach media? Oh yeah. And like all those movie maker <laughs> projects. Like I I admittedly yes. have used movie maker projects in my own videos, old videos. But at that time, it was probably the best thing for clans. Now I see like these all new media projects, like your guys's, and I'm really impressed with it. Uh, could you tell me, like, let's let's cover your software. What do you guys use for your software, or Makoto? Um, our software has always been changing. Uh, I got pretty comfortable with uh, a software called Camtasia for a while. And uh, for anyone in the community who's joining in now, um, if they're still using Window Movie Maker, I highly suggest they go to that. There's ways to get it for free. Pretty much no problem, but uh, moving on to uh, our later videos and videos in the future, uh, the Adobe software is where we're at now. All right. So, yeah, the media basically comes down to the community, like, right now. There, there has been a lot of media in Halo Reach, which made it really popular, and you guys have started media in Halo 4. Do you think, like, for the growth of the new community that, like, there has to be a lot more media, or, yeah? Uh, media is absolutely necessary for clans. Uh, we've been saying this, and like whenever we kind of discovered it ourselves, uh, it can be your greatest weapon or uh, your greatest weakness. If you don't have media, people can say anything about you, uh, whether it be true or not. And if you do have media, um, vice versa, you can you can manipulate it, or you could simply show the truth. Uh, you can show your battles. You can get your name out there. You can recruit people a lot easier, and uh, you can do pretty much anything you want. Right? It's it's the World Wide Web, and uh, it opens up your clan in a lot of ways that you can't without it. So. It also breeds an air of professionalism. All right, for sure. So since we're on a media topic, I'm going to be talking a bit. Like, I was talking to Ling Ling Killer and uh, Sentry Strike, and they said the uh, Halo 4 community wasn't that active, in, or the Halo 4 community wasn't that active as it was compared to them. But what is your guys' opinions on them on that? Uh, personally, I'd have to disagree. Um, they're, like... What you guys seem to be defining activity by is uh, how many clans there were, how many wars were fought, uh, battles, alliances, and uh, that was just as uh, prominent in Halo 4 as it was in Reach, I believe. Um, maybe not as much uh, media as there was on Reach, but definitely better quality media. And uh, still, there was, there was a lot of small clans. The only difference, uh, for sure, was that there was a lot of uh, medium to small clans as opposed to a lot of larger to medium clans that were found in Reach. All right. 
so uh what was i gonna talk about oh yeah so yeah i was there was a lot of youtube videos that are popping up such as like one of the famous like uh youtube commentators uh i slayer uk right you probably heard of him yes we uh we have talked to i slayer before and we've followed him for his five minutes of fame that he had at one point all right. So, yeah. not not to insult anyone, just he for a, for a while he was watched by a lot of people. All right. So, I'm basically in his latest video which he doesn't upload that much anymore for some reason. But that's that's what I was getting at. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's five minutes fame, but he uploaded a video saying is the clan, my opinions on or his opinion on like the clan community dying or something like that, right? Uh, and yeah, basically, yeah. a lot of people were covering, like, I bas basically thought the clan community was dying, too, because when I go on YouTube and I see a, a guy like that with, like, a lot of subs, and he's one of the faces of the community, or his fame, five minutes of fame, as you'd say, right, uh, basically talking about, is the clan community dying, I, it got me thinking, right, and that's why I started my channel and everything like that. Now, I like your guys' opinions, like, on, is the, was the clan community dying, sort of, in Halo 4? Um, it was definitely slowed, but I don't think it's dead. As uh, as we go into Master Chief Collection, um, we have to think about how there's both Halo Reach and Halo 4 coming together, and it will cause a lot of sparks. Um, what the Halo 4, Halo Reach crisis was, was that uh, the community was kind of divided and separated by the two games, and uh, I feel like that caused a lot of inactivity, rather than... Uh, continuing with the norm for the community. So, once everyone gets situated on Xbox One and 343 fixes uh, their stuff, um, I feel that the community is going to have a drastic pickup again. All right. So, uh, one thing is, are you guys on Halo Master Chief Edition right now, or Master Chief Collection right now, or still Halo 4? We are in between right now. We are officially waiting for the Christmas drop for our last boat out. As, uh, as I'm going to call it, from the 360. Um, and at the same time, we are openly recruiting our Master Chief collection, but uh, we are, we're still waiting for bugs to get sorted out, as you can imagine. So, uh, since you guys were one of the like well-known clans in the Halo 4 community at the time, would you mind like stating the clans that were in the Halo 4? Because there is not much media out there for Halo 4 clans, but you know a lot of medium and small clans and power clans. As you would say, because there was no superpowers. Do you mind stating well, them out? Which which clans are we referring to? Are we referring to all the clans we know of, or are we referring to anyone who had uh, an integral role in Halo Four, or was a notable clan in our in our eyes? Uh, let's go with the notable and clans in Halo Four. Okay. Um, for a while in in Halo Four, we drifted through as we rose through. Um, uh, circles, I would I would call them, and we came across quite a few clans. Um, off the topic, or not off the topic, but off the top of my head, sorry. Um, UHR is probably one of the best clans in Halo 4 that uh, we we ever met. Really, UNR is another noble clan, obviously. Empire of the Rising Sun, and those are all the clans that we um, gave a lot of fame to. There's also the NSWDG. Um, also, no, it's led by Black One. I forget what their old name was. Why, do you remember? It was something like... Their Spectrum. name's constantly changing, but, like, as, <laughs> as long as people know, like, it's Black One's clan. We also had a lot of clans that we knew that went to Reach. I'm going to throw a shout-out to the WRC, one of our first allies. Um, one of our first fights, actually, was uh, the Allied Nations clan, uh, the, the UNMCF. There's um, lots of the KIA, feel but... Oh, yes, the understand. KIA. All right. So, what about the Shields of Honor? Have you guys heard of them? Actually, everybody, or a lot of people have heard of the Shield of Honor. Are we talking about the shield, the Reach Shields of Honor with, uh, um, Wyatt? Spartan Joe? What was that? Yeah. yeah Spartan no, Joe. Spartan Joe. No, there's a guy yeah, Spartan Joe. Oh, G G1 Joe. Yeah, G1 Joe. Yeah, GI so, Joe. Yeah. So, was he in Halo Reach? Because I think he was in Halo 4 at one point. He was in Halo 4 for a very brief time, and we uh, actually found uh, a very close relationship with him for for a time. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, his clan was going through a struggling time, and he sought sanctuary in our clan for a brief period while he could uh, recuperate. Right. So we actually know uh, the Shields of Honor quite well, I guess. Okay. We haven't had any dealings in a little bit, though. Okay. 
So I'm basically going to be covering the clans up, basically, because there was a big, good chunk of clans that were in Halo 4 that went back to Reach, and you guys stayed on Halo 4, was that right? Yes. Alright, so during the time when, like, a bunch of, cl one clan went to Halo Reach, I'm guessing more clans followed up after that, right? Yeah, there were um, a lot of clans, like, Reach was definitely, um, for a lot of clans that would come to Halo 4 and then they would experience issues, a lot of them would fall back to Reach as a last resort. Mm -hmm. And uh, some clans went there after wars that were fought, and uh, it, it was unfortunate to see because Halo 4 was the newer game, and I don't feel that any of the new Halos will be any less like Halo 4 or any more like Halo Reach. It's only going to get um, more advanced in the way that Halo 4 was, and it's, it's unfortunate if your clan was unable to adapt initially, but the Master Chief Collection can hopefully help some people out with that. Alright, so one thing we're also going to cover too is the UNSC community. From what I'm hearing, there are, a lot of people are switching to the UNSC, because originally the UNSC <clears throat> was after the military community, one of the biggest, uh, the military community was basically the biggest thing for Halo clans, right? But the UNSC was basically based off the, the military, but they have different ideologies, right? And that's, and that's really what it breaks down to. It's their ideology. There's not a lot that separates them from what we, we are. Um, we're all clans, and we all exist on this Halo community. It's just really this false sense of an ideology that changes our two clans. But from what I'm hearing from majority of the military community is that the UNSC community, they although they have different ideologies, they have been taking out a lot of small clans, and many people are blaming these, like, small blaming the UNSC community for taking out these small clans and not helping the growth of the community. What is your opinion on that? Well, obviously it's not right to attack a clan and cause it to disband. That's uh, not a good way to develop the community. And as for the UNSC clans, um, whatever the reasons may be, be it their ideology, what they're feeling like doing this weekend, it's uh, if it's without any reason at all, then it should be in check in some way or another but at the same time if we uh, try to go on some crusade against the UNSC community that could cause uh, a lot of clans that are starting up now to get dragged into it and we could create some new powers and at the same time cause a big loss to the clans that are just coming up now all right so since you guys were involved in the Halo 4 I'm gonna ask you about a couple of clans that have popped up and probably started conflict Let's start with the Warhammer clans. Do you know? You know? Um, have you heard of the War? You heard? You talk about the BA, right? Let's talk about them since they were iconic. Fox well, Hammer, sorry. I would never. I would never call the BA iconic. Mm -hmm. The BA, in a, in essence, were a troublemaker. They would never want to play by the rules. They would never admit to any kind of defeat or loss. They would only seek to start trouble. They bet. They backstabbed everybody. Essentially, they were only in the community for shits and giggles. Right. And that's that's the way they saw it. Part of my language, but that's that's how we feel. And at that point, like there were so many other clans in the military community that disliked the BA or know how the BA are that like they would come together and then say, I don't see BA as an actual clan. In fact, um we had a war and at one point uh, it was agreed upon by the by uh, us and the other clan that if um, the BA joined the game as a third party because they were actually known to do that, we would both put aside our differences and kill the BA, and that actually happened. All right. Like, so have BA you heard, is actually sorry. ridiculous. So have you heard sorry. of the United Federation? Or the United UF Federation, like the UF or the UUF, or or, or the it's UF, the UF. It was run by UF Warlord, or that's his current name, actually. Do you know who UF Warlord is? Uh, they weren't around we, for very long, from what I understand, right? So from here, this is what I'm going to explain to you right now. So UF Warlord, he's all over the Halo clan community, and he's not a liked guy. He has a weird personality, but wait, sorry, were they always known as the UF? They were, actually had a bunch of clan names. Honestly, the guy who led a UF war. What was what was their last one? Last USFH? one was the Ultramarines. Okay. Yeah. So anyway. Before that. Before that, the United Federation. Okay. 
Yeah, just to tell you, this guy posted on Facebook his past clans, his top 10 clans, but yeah, he was a Warhammer clan guy. So I'm guessing you probably don't know much about the Warhammer other than BA who put who put the name, bad name out there for them. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if, if any Warhammer clans were similar to BA or if there's any war hammer clans out there that are trying to come in the community like there's gonna be a really bad stigma about them for a long time yeah. all right so we're gonna move on to your future of your clan what do you guys do you guys have a future or what do you plan for the future well makoto i'll let you uh talk about our enhances in media yeah um before like i get into that the los has always uh, set goals for ourselves we've never been the clan to come in the community and say like we want to we want to rule it we want to be the top as a lot of little clans do when they first begin and uh, it's not a good way to operate because you can't just you know go for the top in most situations so as with halo 4 when on the master chief collection i imagine we're just going to set realistic standards to begin with and slowly work our way up like we did previously uh, as far as media goes uh, you, we we talked like briefly about software, and the software has gotten a lot more advanced for our media department. So our media should also be more advanced than it was in the past. All right. So I forgot to cover something <laughs> in the Halo Four thing, but you guys have you guys heard of the coalition to take down Sentry Strike and the NRI or Sentry Director? The coalition currently or previous coalitions? Well, apparently the coalition still exists, but. I heard, so when Sentry Strike changed uh, the clan name to NRI, there was apparently a rebellion amongst the Sentries to take down the, take down the NRI, because they didn't like the name, and they basically formed a United Union, or they're called the F-U-U-F, which is called the Fake United Union. Do you guys, have you guys heard of that? Honestly, um, if, if, like, to talk about Halo 4, I don't feel that the NRI or the UUF uh, was very influential after the initial stages of Halo 4 at any time. Uh, their name is still mentioned by a lot of smaller clans occasionally. Uh, for example, like even the BA on many accounts, they, uh, they stated that they had connections with the UUF and they were waiting for them to come back. And you'll always hear people saying they're waiting for the UUF to come back, and they never have. Um, and I, I don't know if they will. I, I hope they do because I hope the clan community gets more clans under it, but I, I don't feel that the NRI has been influential in a very long time as many powers in this community currently stand. So I do have close contact with Sentry Strike himself. So I'm going to tell you guys this, and I think if you watched the interview with him, he stated too, right now he is currently recruiting on the Master Chief Collection. He was also recruiting on Halo, and uh, he never popped out uh, at any time to do anything of importance. So yeah. so currently, as I was stating in like many other clan interviews, UUF was apparently a, a big threat in the beginning. That's what uh, the UNR president, Ling Ling, said. And apparently there, he said that there was a coalition, and many other clans said there was a coalition to take him down. And they took him off Halo 4. So that's why there wasn't much activity from it. But do you think that Halo 4 would have succeeded if there was more clans like the UUF that people wanted to go up against? A lot of people compared our clan to the UUF for a very long time. Um, whenever we first got on Halo 4. In fact, we, uh, in fact, Ling Ling, in, hit, in the last interview, offhandedly mentioned our name in association with the UUF and NAVCOM as uh, an imperialistic clan that people um, will try to fight or team up against. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, what is your opinion on that, what he said? Clans have always, um, in this community, from what I've seen, they, they will form coalitions and team up and uh, try to take down clans. And like in the case of the UUF, they did take down that clan. And in the case of the UN, that clan was also taken down. Um, on Halo 4, there were coalitions made against clans um, that shared similarities to the UUF. And those coalitions were defeated, <clears throat> maybe for the first time in um, the history of, of this community. Because from what I understand, whenever a power is targeted, they're usually taken down. And that really wasn't the case on Halo 4. The powers remained... Um, for the most part, intact throughout the entirety. All right. So, do you guys have any opinions on how this community will grow in the future? Because Halo Master Chief Collection is currently a bypass game for Halo Five. Um, that's definitely the way it's looking right now because everyone is uh, 
getting a negative feel from the Master Chief Collection due to the bugs, and just, in general, they're looking into the future. Um, I definitely think that uh, by the time the Master Chief Collection gets uh, updated and is fully ready for the community to take hold on it, um, Halo 5 is going to have the similar effect that uh, Halo 4 and Halo Reach had with uh, the Halo 5 and the Master Chief Collection. I feel that clans will flock to the Master Chief Collection and cling to it just like Reach, and uh, at the same time, there are going to be newer progressive clans on Halo 5. I feel it might become a similar kind of scenario. So you think it's going to be good for the Master Chief Collection and potentially Halo 5? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have high hopes. It's just a uh, simple matter of people have to learn to adapt to uh, the, the new games. That's just how it is. We can't cling to the past. So as Ling Ling Killer was describing in his last video and I described in my, future for the fu in my video for the future of clans, he basically described saying that in the old community, what their choices were is there was a lot of there was a couple of clans and there was me and their media and basically how it was is should I join this clan that clan and whatever for for Halo oh shit I messed up for Halo 4 all right and then in Halo Reach the way he described it was there was join this clan that clan or create your own clan what was your opinion on that um i feel it was the same on Halo 4 um what wasn't mentioned in in your interview with Ling Ling was definitely, there were a lot of new clans constantly on Halo 4. A lot of these clans didn't make it, a lot of these clans weren't notable, and a lot of these clans didn't have media. And uh, that was probably the issue um, in, in the case of the, the problems that they might have had. You know, media is, is a big part of clans, like we mentioned, and uh, it's, it's very necessary if you want to become known in the community, be successful, and do well. But, um, but uh... yeah. There's a, there's a fourth option, though, that I'd like to explore that uh, Ling Ling might not have gone over. Um, when we talk about helping smaller clans or building smaller clans, um, the fourth option is not to decide to become a part of one of these known clans or to start your own clan, but to seek help from these big clans to uh, align yourself with them. And that's one of the things that I feel really took off in uh, the, this new generation. Um, clans definitely started to stick together in packs. For example, even the UNR was trying to do their protectorate thing, and we were doing our own kind of uh, province thing. It's just, uh, there's definitely a little more notice of the smaller clans than just the big clans. Because that's, that's the future of the community. We have to get clans to grow. And definitely that should be a focus. So, since you brought up the UNR, I forgot about that question, honestly. Do you want to you want to tell me the conflict, or tell our viewers the conflict between the UNR, how it all started? Um, to go into the conflict with the UNR, um, we have, I was just talking about the point of they had a protectorate, and we had uh, what we called at the time a territory. Um, essentially, by the rights of uh, our uh, alliance that is more than an alliance, that's the triumvirate. I think that we have to describe what the triumvirate really is before we can properly defend any of the actions that were taken by it. Wyatt, would you like to um, give your rendition of what the triumvirate was to us, since it was your brainchild? Yeah, for sure. Um, the triumvirate, in, in its essence, was uh, the closest thing to a superpower that the Halo 4 uh, clan community ever saw. It was the unity of three clans, uh, three powers, and uh, we worked symbiotically. Uh, there was a free exchange of resources, of information, and uh, just in general, all of our members and all of the other members of the triumvirate were uh, were friends and were, were companions, were, uh, were comrades, and we would have done anything for them, and vice versa. They, they would have done anything for us, and on occasion, uh, that did happen. The clans under the triumvirate, under the triple alliance of UHR, LOS, and Empire of the Rising Sun, uh, they were under our protection. And we had told them in the agreement that no matter what, we will always have their back. We'll help them out however we can. And uh, that was the case. Um, to put things into a better context, um, one of the protectorates of the UNR apparently had started trouble with one of our territories. So we, the UNR and the triumvirate got involved. Now, when uh, the UNR had uh, uh, stated 
they were going to evaluate all the information and decide if their uh, clan was in the right or the wrong, and then they would do something about it. And then we had made it clear to them that no matter what the outcome, we were going to back up our guy, because that's what we had pledged to do. And if we're not uh, going to go by our word, then our word means nothing. That is the pact. So, essentially... We had said to Ling Ling that he can take his time and decide what he wants to do. So Ling Ling had left, and a few days later, he'd come back with a coalition. A coalition of any clans he could really find. Clans like the Legion of Dawn, JFCA, just a whole bunch of clans. I think there were six or seven. And uh, what these clans did, did was declared war on us simultaneously. And... Uh, we sat down and discussed terms. Terms were agreed upon. They were very... I think I think they agreed to the entire LOS standard raid rule set. Anyways. This war conducted. Um, the first fight was, uh, I believe, the forces from UHR and LOS fighting UNR forces mixed with some of their coalition, maybe. Anyways, it was a very heated battle. How long did it go on for what uh went from 9 eastern time to 3 p.m or 3 a.m sorry um eastern time again and uh, at that point it was decided by uh ling ling and myself because i was the highest officer from our forces in the battle that uh, we would reschedule the next day and the next day whenever i contacted ling ling he told us uh straight up that he would give us that battle and that he now wanted to attack one of our bases and the war continued on with us having the first victory and uh the way the way that went is that kind of set up the tone for the whole war, where we would have uh, really harsh conflicts with UNR and their coalition, and then they would uh, surrender. They would forfeit. And eventually, uh, the UNR got out of the war really early. They were not seen or talked to after the second fight. They could not be reached for comment. Ling Ling went essentially underground. No one could see him or hear him. And his coalition without its head, ran around and pretty much fought a lot of wars and they lost a lot of war, or wars, battles, battles, and they lost a lot of battles. And that war was kind of just uh, this failed attempt at trying to strike at the Triumvirate, which at this time was seen as the superpower of Halo 4. <clears throat> Alright, so do you think you could compare your superpower for Halo 4 to the superpowers in Halo Reach, such as the Acto Alliance and the JFCA. Absolutely. <clears throat> I think I can too as well. So, <clears throat> is there? What was I gonna say? Oh yeah. So as I was, as the other people were saying, there was a bunch of alliances. Were you guys declaring war on any clans during this time? Or were was your clan members war hungry at any time? Um. The thing about wars is that wars are no are no ill omen in the community. They're not bad. We should never get the stigma that fighting is bad. Fighting without a reason is bad, but fighting, period, is uh, not. Um, if there's no fighting, then there's not a lot of activity, and that can cause clans to, you know, die. So when I, we definitely had fights, especially through all of Halo Four. But did the Triumvirate fight? Anytime the Triumvirate fought, the Triumvirate fought as one or not at all. That was that was the motto of the Triumvirate, to work as one. Now, uh, we did have one or two different campaigns against certain clans that were causing trouble in the community. I think one was the USSR, Wyatt, right? Yeah, it was. That was like essentially a task for the Triumvirate, because up to that point, the Triumvirate Alliance uh, had been in no conflicts, but uh, we were just sharing information working together and strengthening the uh, the alliance that we had made. And then we used the USSR, uh, which I believe changed their name halfway through to maybe the SAF. Or maybe they, they started... Oh, it was the other way around. It was it the was. other way around. And um, we used them as a test. And you, you can see on our media, and maybe even theirs, they might mention it as well, um, it was massively successful for our side. And after that, the only other conflict that that superpower got involved the in the UNR war. The practice of uh, the triumvirate fighting these clans was the simple um, trying to work together as, as one clan and uh, fight as one clan. So we would always try to comprise um, our uh, 
raids as multiple um, squads, I suppose, of these different clans acting under one command. Um, in fact, it became in the Triumvirate that uh, the other clans of the Triumvirate could command your troops without you being there. For example, on many occasions, we could uh, go to the UHR and say, we need to go do this Triumvirate fight without Achilles being there, and we could, you know, get some of his squads and, you know, go fight. It was, it was the simple fact that uh, we were to work as one or not at all, and that's how we functioned. So, that's what really made us a superpower, and therefore, I don't really believe I have to say anything more about it. Yeah, I don't think that we were ever more hungry as the tribe at any point. All right. I feel like we were progressive. Alright, so is there anything else you want, you want to cover about that I probably not asked? Uh, like as a statement? or As a statement, is there like anything you want to add? Because I think I'm out of questions right now. Uh, maybe, maybe say Targaryen has something here. I can't, I can't exactly think of anything. I think we've covered quite a bit. Um, as for the state of things, uh, it has been mentioned that ideology plays a, an integral part in the community. It, fu it's, it's how, uh, apparently the UNSC clans function. It's how clans like the Sangheili community function. It's, it's a, it's a, it's an inspiration for a lot, like uh, the UUF. That's how why they were taken down, apparently due to their ideology. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I don't think that trying to destroy another ideology is a right cause. Because that was one of the things that Triumvirate held dear. The fact that the UHR was by no means the same ideology as the LOS. And the entire concept was that our three clans having three different ideologies could coexist on... Uh, unhindered I guess and that we could actually do things better as a whole breaking down walls is a better way of going about it yeah I really feel like we would have set an example for anyone who had their doubts and like even right now from the interviews you've done I definitely feel like this divide is again beginning where uh, the ideologies are going to play a big part and the LOS definitely had like a very aggressive ideology throughout our history and it wasn't until we met the triumvirate that uh, we put that ideology to maybe better use and, you know, we work symbiotically with uh, a clan that is, uh, for the most part, entirely peaceful, which would have been the Empire of the Rising Sun. A lot of people know them as extremely peaceful. And uh, the UNR, which was like your typical United clan at, at first, even though they ended up changing their style to a more Greek-based uh, clan, they still maintain that united principle of, you know, peace and stopping wars and doing the right thing. And... You know, we worked together and we did things on Halo 4 that hadn't been done in a very long time in this community. And I feel like if if that isn't an example for anyone else, I, I don't know what is. All right. So we're getting near the end um, of this video. Is there anything else you want to say? There's, there is, there's, one, there's one thing that uh, I would like to say in regards to media. Mm -hmm. That uh, I feel like there were many accomplishments done in the Halo 4 community that were pioneered there. And this new way of media that we were talking about in the early on in the video uh, was definitely one of them. For example, uh, we were talking about Windows, Windows Movie Maker projects and how they were the old media. And like our new media, with his, which was, I don't, how would you describe it, Wyatt? Um, definitely like the biggest change was capture cards seemed to be more available for people. The successful media of Halo 4. Uh, was made by people with capture cards. And not to say that if you don't have a capture card that you you won't be able to have media because, I mean, if you look at the Aero Nation or some uh, smaller clan, some of them just point a camera at their TV and, and commentate over it. And, you know, any media is better than no media. But uh, advancements were definitely made because if you look at Reach, uh, you, you know, like, uh, I, I don't know exactly how to describe it. Like, there was quite a few clans that controlled the media for everyone, and that's also not necessarily a great thing. Because for Halo Reach, I believe they had the United Nations, the United Union Federation, the Department of Defense, and you had a couple side medias. But people listened to the big medias the most. That's how Strike's ideology was spread, because he was a big media. So, yes. so yeah. So, are you guys some, done summarizing the media thing? 
or any more you want to say about that? Um, the, the only thing I really want to make a statement about is the fact that Halo 4, I feel, is, is definitely a changing force for media, the way it's done, and I feel that it's going to carry over into the Master Chief Collection. So, uh, if you have an outdated media, you should definitely look into the way that media has been changing and, um, you know, get a good feel for it. All right. So now I think we're finally at the end of this video. So yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you the same question as I asked all the other uh, people I've interviewed. Is there any suggestions you could give to any people that are that you think can improve the clan community, like people that are watching this right now? Like if there's people that want to create their own clan, give them suggestions or what you think that we should do to benefit this community. I would say keep in mind the options that uh, we we mentioned earlier. It's not make your own clan, join a large clan, or uh, or die. It's there's there's more options now. Those options we, we can seek help on Halo Four, and like you should you should look into this whenever you you come in. Keep this in mind that you don't necessarily have to have it you against the world. There are clans out there that will help you. You and I are saying that they'll help people. The LOS has always been around. Uh, since our empire was founded to help clans, you know, under our empire. And uh, there's other clans that are doing this now that are, are you know, copying these ideas and, and following through on it. So, you know, get yourself and, uh, people and work together. As for advice, I would like to say that uh, for a new clan, I, w I would give them the, the secret to LOS's rise. It's really set goals for yourself. When LOS came into the community, our our primary goal, our first goal was to become a known clan, to have a name that people knew without meeting. And then once we had achieved that goal, we set a new goal, to become a power. And then when we became a power, we had a new goal, to help other clans get out of this ditch. And that's really what it's about. You just need to set goals for yourself. Don't come into the community and then expect to, all of a sudden, tomorrow, being a big shot. You have to pace yourself. Set, set steps work with your guys, become friends, and, you know, really enjoy yourself. Because if you're not going to enjoy the community, then your clan's not going to last. All right. So I think this is probably the end of the video. We've covered a lot in this video. There was actually a lot of good ideas and good topics discussed. I'd like to thank you, Saint... Oh, crap, I can't say your names anymore. Shoot. Do you want to say Saint Makoto, Saint Makoto and Saint Targaryen. And, yeah, I'd like to thank you, Saint Makoto and Saint Tar Targaryen, for doing this interview. I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be happy with this interview as well, and it'll probably benefit the community for sure. So thank you guys for being on this interview. Yeah, man, anytime. Definitely. Anytime, right. definitely. We would love to have a follow-up. All right. Yeah, now off topic of this video, I'm going to basically interview... I'm going to say something to you viewers out here. Later on, I am planning to bring... A, b a big interview or more or less a debate of a bunch of uh, clan media guys such as the LOS, the UNR, the United Union, and maybe some more old idea, uh, more old iconic figures to the community that were in reach. So yeah, that's what I'm planning to do. And you guys, I'm guessing, are looking forward to this debate as well. Yeah, we're always down for a debate, I think. Anyone who knows us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So before I end off this video, I'm gonna guys, I'm gonna tell you guys who I'm doing the interview with next for the viewers and probably you guys. If you guys don't know him, he is probably one of the founding fathers of the military community. It is sent. It is Shadow Sniper 172. So yeah, have you guys heard of him? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He has agreed to do an interview with me today, so I'm so happy. Oh, that's good. All right. All right. That'll be something to look forward to. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like and support our community. If you guys have anything you want to comment, just leave it down in the description below. I'm pretty sure they want to hear it, and I want to hear it too. Yeah, guys, show your love for the LOS. <laughs> we are Legion. We are Sin. <laughs> Anyways, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.